tires. They cushion and support one of humanity's greatest inventions. They move us around and help us land back on Earth safe and smooth. They embody high stakes action chases. Burning them has become a symbol of revolution. Ever since their invention, tires have rolled into our lives and changed us forever. But with 2.5 billion of them produced every year, how do they impact our lives and the planet? Early tires were made of leather, iron and steel. But the first practical pneumatic tires, as they are known today, were invented in the 1800s. Today, billions of tires carry us millions of miles every single day. But along the way, they've also created a huge headache. How we make, use and discard tires has left a trail of destruction, polluting our water, land and air. This is what our killer looks like. Tire. Tires are mainly made of a mix of both natural and synthetic rubber, to which hundreds of chemicals and compounds are added. Synthetic rubber is made from fossil fuels, while natural rubber is sourced from trees like these. Around 70% of the natural rubber produced worldwide goes into making tires, and the booming rubber industry has been responsible for deforestation in countries across Southeast Asia and West Africa. More than 4 million hectares of tropical forest have been cleared in Southeast Asia for rubber plantations since 1993. That's an area about the size of Switzerland. While there's a lot of clamour for sourcing natural rubber sustainably, tracking it is a nightmare. Lack of transparency makes it difficult to trace tyre supply chains back to the source. So it's hard to figure out if the rubber used in tyres is being harvested sustainably or causing new deforestation. But let's assume the best case scenario and say we could source rubber sustainably. That still leaves a big problem. Transforming rubber into tyres involves many chemicals and compounds. These additives give tyres properties that increase durability, minimise air loss during a puncture, and cushion our ride. We're just gonna glide. An average tyre contains about 400 additives, and while the health and environmental impacts of many of these are yet to be studied, some have proven to be dangerous. Take 6PPD for instance. It's added to prevent the cracking and degradation of rubber, but as it reacts with ozone in the air, it transforms into a highly toxic chemical. Mass deaths of coho salmon in parts of the US have already been linked to 6PPD pollution. And it's not just the fish that are feeling the impact. As we speed along roads and runways, tyres give off toxic particulate emissions. Studies show that car tyre dust causes 2,000 times more particulate pollution than car exhausts. While tailpipe emissions are regulated, air pollution caused by tyre wear and tear has gone unchecked for years. As they wear out, tyres also release microplastics. Synthetic rubber is a plastic variant made using petroleum that breaks down as vehicles roll along. Environmental scientists now say that tyre wear is a major source of microplastic pollution in our oceans. On land, one billion tyres reach the end of their life every year. Of these, over 75% end up in landfills. This is the Sulaibia Tyre Graveyard in Kuwait. It used to be the largest dump site for tyres in the world. In 2021, a huge fire visible from space broke out here. It burned up an estimated one million tyres. Open burning is, in fact, often practiced to dispose of old tyres. Research shows this emits dangerous levels of noxious gases, including carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide and sulphur dioxide, posing grave threats to human health. And leaving them in landfills isn't any better. As time goes by, heaps of tyres leach toxins into soil and aquifers. But what are the alternatives on offer? Well, at Sulaibia, the tyres were cleared out and recycled to make rubber mats, flooring and other products. Many other attempts have been made globally to extend the life cycle of tyres. By breaking them down and reusing rubber and other components, they've been shredded into pellets and used in construction. They've also been used to make artificial sports pitches, although this has been found to add to microplastic pollution. In another process, called pyrolysis, old tyres are burned in the absence of air. The resulting reusable carbon black can be used in new tyres. Oils can be modified to make alternate sources of fuel. Gases can be looped back into the system to keep it running. 
but pyrolysis is controversial. It's been found to produce multiple waste streams and cause air and water pollution. Studies have also shown that tyre pyrolysis emits carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulphur dioxide and other particulate matter, much above permissible limits. Alternatives to rubber are also being found. Flowers might seem like the last place to source tyre rubber, but Russian dandelions are now being investigated as an alternate source to tropically sourced rubber. The dandelions have already been used in limited cases to make tyres. As the flowers can be grown on marginal lands, they don't compete with food crops. Other solutions are possible. There's even work on developing flying cars that could whisk us around while reducing tyre use. Step back to buy tires again. <laughs> but experts say, as long as the rubber meets the road, tyres will always produce waste and emissions. Vehicle sales are increasing worldwide, driving up demand for more tyres. You hear that clunk? No. Yeah, that tells me you need four new tyres. The transition to heavier electric vehicles, while good for the climate, will only add to tyre wear and tear. The best solution would be to greatly improve mass transportation while reducing car and tyre use, but it might take a while for us to get there. You know, I actually don't mind taking the bus. And so, while we wait for those flying cars to swoop in, where we're going, we don't need roads. We might want to dream up other solutions and get rolling with them.